Die Ausstellung E4, The Museum as Home, Kunst aus Ghana, präsentiert Werke zeitgenössischer KünstlerInnen und die Ausstellung zeigt in einem zweiten Teil historische Objekte aus Ghana. Zum einen ähm, fanden wir es total spannend, mit Nana Furiata Ayim zusammenzuarbeiten, ähm, die ja schon den ersten ghanaischen Pavillon auf der Venedig Biennale 2019 kuratiert hat und das war einfach ein total spannendes Ausstellungsprojekt. It's an exhibition of contemporary and historical Ghanaian art. So they will come across art by contemporary artists, young contemporary artists, um, Natenkwa, Rita Morina Benison, Kwesi Dako, Afroscope, and Studio Niali from Ghana, Diego Araosha, and then we have the older artist, Elena Tui, who's kind of looking over the work. And then we have the historical section here as well, with works taken from German museums. Ja, wir haben einmal antike Elemente und wir haben zeitgenössische Elemente in dieser Ausstellung, weil die ja genau den Unterschied deutlich machen. Europäische und nordamerikanische Museen haben in der Vergangenheit äh, in aller Regel Kunst von europäischen und nordamerikanischen Künstlerinnen gezeigt, eher sogar nur von Künstlern und weniger von Frauen. Und Dinge, die aus den Kolonien kamen und Kulturgüter und Kunst ähm, aus Togoland zum Beispiel waren, wie der damalige Sprech war, ähm, die sind in ethnologischen Sammlungen einfach verschwunden und lagen in Vitrinen und wurden gut aufbewahrt und wurden vielleicht ausgestellt als ethnologisches Sammlungsstück, aber sie wurden nicht als Kunst als solches präsentiert. Die Objekte haben alle ihren eigenen Healing Space. Da drin sind alle in einer Fufusela äh, untergebracht. Die Fufusela, das ist die Ausstellungsarchitektur und dann hat jede Vitrine, wir müssen immer noch Vitrinen benutzen, weil wir sind ja immer noch in einem deutschen Museum, aber da hat jede Vitrine wenigstens ihr eigenes Zuhause und ähm, verschiedene Heilpflanzen und so weiter sind ihnen mitgegeben und Musik und Soundlandschaften, die quasi zu ihnen passen oder vielleicht angemessener sind für diese Objekte. I generally quite like to, to um, play with the idea of time and having um, different time planes coexisting. These objects were taken in colonial times from Ghana or from what was then um, different kingdoms but is now Ghana um, and obviously we're all going through the process now of bringing them back, reacclimatize them to kind of bring them back to heal them in some way. I think it's, it's kind of like giving the objects uh, a space on their way home, hopefully, to um, reconnect with where they were taken from. The artwork I'm presenting in the frame of this exhibition are old photographs. The work is actually layered in two parts. The first layer is of old photographs I discovered of my grandfather. He was a photographer and I didn't know about this till he passed away about two years ago. And we discovered some very old photos and undeveloped films in his stuff. So I began to ask questions and I found out he used to really take photographs of his community, of his family, of people around him. And when I first discovered photography, that was what I was also doing, just taking photographs of everyday lives of people around me. So when I found out that connection, to be honest, it sort of blew my mind. And the exhibition called Ifie, which is Akan, Ghanaian Akan language for home, it was a chance for me to explore my own home, where I'm from, in terms of my, my lineage, my ancestry, and just to connect that with my journey so far, which leads to the second layer of the work, which is the digital film. It's actually a photo manipulation. So I found a garden setting, and I'm not Christian, but as a queer man in Africa, one of the things that I used to um, denounce my queerness or my identity is the Christian narrative that, oh, God created man and woman. It's not there's no space for any other thing. And for me, um, true, biologically, creation comes from man and woman, but out of that first creation, there's so much diversity, there's so much individuality. And for me, this is a chance to explore that in my work and just to insert all these other stories, other narratives into that main narrative that has always been pushed, that has always been used as an agenda against queer people. So for me, that, that, is, that is the main idea behind this work. The work I am presenting here today would be the unveiling film. 
It's a documentary that is about how women can take control, right? It's about the body um, being a home. As a black woman, this movie was extremely important for me because um, the culture that I come from, often at times, sexual assault, sexual violence, and rape is, is found upon. It's not very spoken about. It's not something that people open up about. People are not very vulnerable with the story, and for me, um, as someone that has also overcome um, sexual assault and se sexual violence, it was so important for me to tell the stories because I wanted to show other young women who are just like me or younger than me or even older than me what it means to, I guess, um, the fact that what happened to me does not define me, does not define who I am, right? And I could take that and turn it around and, and, and make it into something so powerful and something so beautiful and I can live with it. Um, it, it was important to, to, to show women what it means to, to speak up. So for me it was important to, to show my strength and show the ability that I have as a woman to, to let my voice be heard. E aqui nesse trabalho eu vou correlacionar, né, criar uma relação entre as canções de trabalho brasileiras, a exemplo dos Vissungos, e as canções de trabalho ganesas. Então, as canções de trabalho, elas são talvez as canções de protesto mais antigas do mundo. Ela projeta, ela também organiza um manifesto, ou seja, ela organiza um desejo de fuga de um contexto de exploração. Então, a Esse trabalho, ele, ele inicia, vamos dizer, esse entendimento a partir da, das canções de trabalho no Brasil, principalmente no contexto da mineração, onde a gente tem a exploração de trabalhadores e, de, e ameaça de povos próximos à mineração. E todas essas motivações, elas são organizadas a partir de uma instalação que propõe um caminho uma caminhada para as pessoas, enquanto elas ouvem essas vozes. Sim, através do fone, de headphones, e que você ouve essas canções via ondas de rádio. Uma experiência de audição. In dieser Ausstellung gibt es auf jeden Fall ganz viele spannende Arbeiten, die alle unterschiedliche Aspekte thematisieren. Ich bin persönlich besonders Fan von den Arbeiten von Na Chenkoa Reindorf. Sie hat solche Bilder aus Glasperlen geschaffen und Flaggen, die traditionellen Asafo-Fahnen nachempfunden sind. Also da steckt auch eine ganze Menge an Handwerkskunst dahinter und die gefallen mir persönlich besonders gut. What I would love for people here in Dortmund, if they experience this exhibition, to take back home with them would be just um, an experience of the diversity of Ghana, of not just, um, just the photographs, but of our stories. You have people like Kukwa who is exploring um, what it is to have your body, which is your, your first home, violated. And so for me, it would just be that to not see um, Ghanaians in one light, but to see the, our diversity and the difference that we all bring on board to make us who we are as a people. And I would very much love for people to go on with that experience. Um, I hope that people will take away that beautiful um, healing, you know, that the art, all the art in this museum um, gives to them and, and what it truly means to create authentic art, um, beautiful art, genuine art, um, um, to share with the world. <laughs> <laughs>